Hey everyone, I'm Janelle and I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to weave this adorable little wristlet keychain and you don't even need a sewing machine to do it. So let's get started. One thing you're gonna to wanna to think about when you're creating this little wristlet is how long you want it to be. So how big does that opening need to be for you? I'm going to be making mine about 10 inches long, but depending on the size of your wrist, you may want to make this bigger or smaller. So keep that in mind when choosing your loom because you wanna make sure that you have a couple of inches at least, both on the bottom and the top for this project after weaving. I'm going to be using 4-8 cotton to double warp a total of nine strings onto my loom. Next, I'm taping down my loom to make sure that it stays steady as I'm weaving. Next, I'm taking a folded over piece of cardstock and making it so it's about two and a quarter inches tall. I'm gonna be weaving this in just using plain weave, which is over one string, under one string. And this is just gonna give us a solid base to beat down onto. Next, we can take a length of either 8-8 cotton or you can use the 4-8 cotton for this as well or whatever fairly thin yarn you have on hand. We're going to be doing one row of twining and then a couple rows of plain weave. Cut off the excess of the tail and now we're ready to get started with the pattern. I'm going to be using a Loops and Threads Cozy Wool for this project. I'm using a gorgeous mustard color, but this will look good in whatever color you prefer. Even though it's a really long piece, I'm gonna start with like two full arm's length of this yarn because I don't want to have to tuck in a lot of ends when we're finished. So I think that's about a good amount to work with. It's not gonna be too annoying. This is one of the easiest patterns we've done. It's only nine strings wide. So if you're brand new to patterns, this is going to be the project for you. It's only four rows long and then we just get to keep repeating those rows. So it's going to be easy to just keep track of everything and where you are in the pattern. So let's read this pattern together. All the colored in blocks represent going over one warp string. So this block right here represents going over one warp string and the uncolored or the white paper blocks represent going under. So let's do this first row together. We'll cover up the other rows so that we can just concentrate on the first one. So you can see it's super easy. We're going over two, under two, over one, under two, over two. Pull your yarn all the way through, leave a nice long tail so we can tuck that in later and grab your weaving comb and beat that down. Now we can move up to row two and again, super easy. Under three, over three, under three. Now keep in mind, you don't wanna be pulling tight like this. We want our sides of our piece to be really nice and straight so you can kind of pull it taut while you pull the other way on the warp strings just so that it doesn't leave it like this. So we're pulling it snug, but we're making sure it's not sucking in at the sides. Row three, again, super simple, over one, under one, over two, under one, over two, under one, over one. And once again, pulling it snug at the sides but not letting it pull the warp string in. And you can always go back if you're like, that looks like it's pulling in a little bit. Just go back in there and just pull it out just a little bit. And now we're on the fourth and final row and we're going under one, over two, under three, over two, under one. Now all you have to do is start back at row one and keep repeating that pattern over and over until you've reached the length that you want for your wristlet. As you're weaving up, Keep in mind how tightly you're beating each weft down so that you can keep it as even as possible. We don't want it to be super tight in some spots and really loose in others. We wanna to try to keep that as even as we can. I ran out of yarn and I need to add a new piece. So I'm just leaving a nice long tail here on the last row that I did. I'm going to weave in with a new piece the next row. And all I'm gonna do since I started on and under the warp string, I'm going to loop this back around just to create a little bit of a nicer finish. And then I can just keep on weaving. 
So I'm basically at the right length that I want. And to end this off, if you want it to be symmetrical like I always like it to be, just go back to row one and weave row one. And that way too, we're also leaving our tail going over the warp string, which is always just like a nicer finish. And then we're gonna do what we did to start this, which is three rows of plain weave and one row of twining. Normally I would tell you to always cut off a new piece in order to do your twining stitch, but since this piece is so narrow, we're going to just continue and do the twining. So normally again, I would cut this off and I would start from the left to right to do my twining, but I'm going to skip my own advice just because again, this piece is really small, so I think it'll be fine. And I'm just gonna do the twining going the other way so that we don't have as many ends to tuck in. Now we're gonna flip over the loom and tuck in the ends. I'm using a little metal yarn needle here. This is just gonna make it a little bit easier since it's thinner. We'll start at the bottom with these cotton ends. And I'm just gonna simply weave this into a few of the wefts if we can get in there. It's a tight fit. And I'm gonna even grab one of the thicker yarn wefts and just pull that through. I'm gonna do the same thing here, but I'm gonna go back and forth sort of. So I'm grabbing a couple wefts And then I'm gonna go back up this way. It's a little bit tricky even with this needle. And we'll grab one of those thicker yarn wefts. There we go. Then when we have the yarn wefts, this particular one is a little bit of a nuisance. So I'm bringing it through the edge loops here I've got about three on my needle. I'm gonna pull that through. And then I'm gonna go back down this little channel here. So grabbing these wefts on an angle. And then trimming it off carefully. And then we can go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. There is a little bit of a difference here. So for this one, I'm gonna do something similar to what we just did down there. So I'm gonna bring this up on these edge wefts, and then I'm gonna go down through this channel here, making sure that I'm only grabbing the loops that are on the back and not poking out to the front. So if you see my needle here and I flip this over, you don't see the needle from the front. So you don't wanna go all the way through. And for this one, I could just go down this channel here but I'm kind of liking going through a couple of the edge strings first, just to make it a little bit more secure in there since this is something that will be worn. And then I'm gonna go down through this channel here. I think that'll just keep those in a little bit more securely. And then we have one more and we can tuck in those other cotton ends. Now we can take our little piece off the loom and all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull these warp strings up toward the top of the loom and I'm gonna try to slip off, if possible, the warp string loops on the top. And then on the other end, you can just kind of pull it off. You can slip that paper out. And remembering that this is the right side of our piece and this is the wrong side. Now you can grab a keychain ring. I'm using this one, it's about an inch and a quarter wide. So I'm going to slip this onto the piece. This will just make it easier because then we don't have to go trying to thread it on after. So now that that's on, we're going to basically tie all these knots together at the bottom. It's gonna be a little bit easier if you have something heavy to sit on top of it. So I'm just gonna grab this weight and set it on top just to keep everything nice and secure. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to cut off 
we're gonna cut open all the loops of the warp strings. Now make sure that the ends are nice and lined up with each other at the bottom. And then I'm going to grab the first string of the, the bottom, this one here, and the first string of the top, and I'm going to do an overhand knot to secure them together. We're gonna to try to push them up as close to that end as possible. So they're nice and secure. And then we can grab the second string from the top, the second string from the bottom, and do the same thing. So now they're all knotted together nicely. And now here's where you can get creative. You can decide to cut them really nice and short or you can leave them long. I'm gonna go somewhere in between, I think. Then I'm taking my string brush. This one is from Unfettered Co, but you can also use a cat brush or whatever kind of little comb you have on hand if you want. And I'm just gonna comb out those fringes because then it makes them a little bit more full and floofy looking. If you loved this video, you're gonna love our Diamond Twill Woven Bookmark tutorial. Click here to watch it next.